you from OSEAL. Um, we will discuss the monitoring focus. We will discuss record review item numbers. Um, and then the last thing we're going to show you is how to upload some documents into Infinite Campus, um, just as a reminder in case you need those. And so um, those are kind of the main things that we're going to be talking about. We are going to record this session. So if it's something that you need to come back to, you're able to do so. Um, and then if there's any if there's anyone who wasn't able to make it today so that they can review it if they need to as well. The agenda can be found on your meeting invitation. It's as an, an attachment. Um, and so I'll go ahead and get us started, but we just wanted to thank you for being able to come today um, and, and, and hang through. So I'm going to turn it over to Elisa Zimmerman really quick and let her talk through scheduling interviews with you for just a few minutes. Good morning. Um, so you should have a district person who received, it's called a program scheduling tool. This would have come from the, uh, probably from Erica Tipton. The person that received that scheduling tool is the one then that um, is going to get together with all the different programs. So probably for IDEA, it's going to be the director of special education. And you're going to go ahead and lay out a schedule in that scheduling tool as to who you want us to interview. Uh, principals, assistant principals, uh, obviously the director of special education, special education teachers, ARC leads, uh, mental health staff, classified staff. And from that scheduling tool, that's what we will use then to create those Teams links. And you will get those probably uh, just a couple of days before the actual monitoring visit happens. And it will likely look like one big meeting, like maybe for the morning, and then your staff will follow a schedule that you've created. So at 10 o'clock when it's your, um, when it's a certain special education teachers uh, meeting time, they will jump onto that link have their interview time and then jump off that link. So um, we've had some experience with this um, and it, it works well. It's a little bit, maybe a little bit daunting at first, but I think that it will work very seamlessly once we get rolling with it. If you have questions though, specific to IDEA, I would be the contact person for that and just feel free to, to email me or call me, okay? Thanks, Elisa. Um, so we'll go ahead and move on into um, desk audit information. Great question. Um, so I'm seeing a question in the chat about how many uh, how many file reviews will happen. We'll go over that in just a second. Um, and so there, when we go over your file reviews, we will be looking at um, there's some logistics that are going to need to take place because these are how many people to interview per school. Um, I think it's going to depend on the size of your district. So if you're a very small district, probably as many people as you could fit on the schedule, I would say is probably the best way to go about that. Um, if you're a larger district, then um, contact Elisa and we can help you kind of figure out exactly how many people you, we want to talk to. Um, in most cases, I'd say as many as we can get our hands on and fill that schedule up. But if you are a bigger district, we can help you think through how to how to kind of put that out. Um, good question. Um, because the visits are virtual, typically when we do consolidated monitoring, we are able to do um, the first day of visits is actually a um, file review. Um, because of the way that consolidated is fully virtual this year, we actually will not do be, be doing file reviews as part of the on-site portion. Um, all of that time that is typically spent in your district would be spent with interviews. Um, so we will have um, an additional day of interviews available and then all file reviews will be conducted as a desk audit prior to your visit. So if your visit is a day and uh, is your, if your visit starts on Tuesday, which I think all but one start on Tuesday, then your desk audit will occur on Thursday and Friday the week prior to your visit. Um, and so every we will be doing those in house and we're going to pull all of that information down from Infinite Campus. So you will not have to um, turn any documents in. You won't have to send them through the DOE secure file upload system. We felt like probably the best way to go about it 
was for us to just hop an infinite campus for the specific students that we will do in. We will notify you two weeks in advance of the specific SSID numbers of those students. Um, if you're the first visit, um, pretty much right after this meeting, we're going to go ahead and send you your notification letter that will include all of your SSID numbers in it. Um, the number of files that we pull is dependent um, on the size of your population and your child count. So dependent on your child count, there's a chart that we follow um, and we follow it exclusively and it goes up to 50 students depending on the, the size of your school district. Um, and so we will be looking at that and using that to, you know, guide how we do that. Um, and like I said, it'll be depending on your child count, which is a great time for me to remind you that if you have not done your child count survey yet, please submit that today. Um, Amy Patterson asked me to bring that up. Amy, was there anything else you wanted to remind them of about that while you have them available? Or did I cover it? OK, sorry, I was trying to find my mute button. Um, no, I, I just um, there are only you know, maybe a dozen districts that haven't submitted. I am currently going through um, the what was in the generate and what we pulled from your district's child count um, the first day on December 7th and I'm matching them up. So I'll let you know if they match or not. So thank you for everything you've done. So in order to keep um, reviews consistent, we've used December 1st as the cutoff date to determine what your child count was. So whatever was showing up in your December 1 child count will be the cutoff date for us to determine the size of your population district. That just makes it more consistent across all of the districts that we're pulling it all from one date. Um, additionally, we'll be looking at the most recent information in the student's file um, as of December 1st. But if you were to have additional, like if a student had an ARC meeting between now and when your audit happens, we will take all that into consideration as well, because we don't want you to have a fix an issue and then get cited for it, even though you had already fixed it. So just please keep in mind that we will, you know, use your December 1 child count to um, determine the size of your district and then determine how many files we go from there. Um, but if anything changes and, and we need to look at additional pieces of information for students, we will be happy to do so. Um, in terms of the focus review items, I think that's probably the thing that everybody wants to know the most is what are we going to look at while they're, we're there. Um, so the focus for the monitoring season this school year is IEP development and implementation. So the large majority of your student specific audit where we're looking at your specific child count file, I mean not child count due process files will really be focused on how did you develop an IEP and I'll walk you through those in just a second. Um, and then some of your more systemic reviews, the bigger questions may be a little bit more focused towards implementation. So once those IEPs were in place, how did you ensure that they were implemented for students with disabilities? Um, there should be varying questions regarding all of those things. It's going to be important to remember when you're looking at these item numbers to use the correct um, record review. There are two posted online right now, and that's because there are still some reviews that are happening. They're almost finished on the old version of the record review document. I have placed the most updated um, record review item in the agenda and I'll show you where that is, but I've placed a link to the most recent record review. And if you look at the top, here's how you'll know that you got the right one. And it's gonna give me a bunch of warnings and then send it to a screen you can't see. Um, is you will see at the top of the document, it'll say monitoring begins in the 2021 school year. So some of the item numbers may be a little bit different than some of the ones that you're used to because some of the things changed around and changed numbers, but you'll know you're using the correct one if you see the one that says at the top begins in the 2021 school year. This one won't be updated annually. Um, we look at them annually and if there's changes, we'll, we'll update it, but you could expect that it'll continue until another version comes out. Um, the other one should be taken down in the next couple of months, but there were still a few reviews that are happening on the old version. So we wanted you to still have availability for that one as well if you needed it. So all of the item numbers we're getting ready to go through will be can be found in this and you can, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me or Elisa or April Peeper and we will help you to really understand what what it is that we're coming to talk about. Um, but I'm going to go through another file with you that kind of briefs you on the actual numbers. And this one is also attached to your agenda. 
So this document um, is included in your materials and it really talks about the exact item numbers that we were looking at for your student specific file reviews. Um, and I'm going to just keep going. I'm going to go through them and kind of give you our line of thinking just so you know exactly what it is we're coming to see. So the first items we will be looking through are items 15 through 21, which really just talks about ARC membership and the intent of that one is to just really consider were the right people invited to that meeting and did they attend? So did you have the right people at the table when you developed the IEP for the student? Um, items 22 and 23 will only apply if somebody is dismissed from a meeting, but it really discusses dismissal procedures. So did those people have prior input? Um, were they dismissed properly and on time? Those things will be reviewed only if there was a dismissal in your um, in the meeting. Um, item 32 is just that the IP was reviewed annually. Um, and then we go into 33A through G, which is present levels of academic achievement and functional performance. Um, in that situation, I just really want you to understand like present levels of performance are really a big indicator for free appropriate public education. So when we think about FAPE as a whole and we think about like what is really important, it's really difficult for us to determine if an IEP is appropriately developed, if your present levels are in poor standards. Um, I'll be honest, there was a lot of data that drove um, our selection of present levels as a whole, which then led us to IP development um, that showed that as a whole, present levels in the state are lacking um, and that they really don't have strong enough evidence to be able to support the rest of the IEP. Um, and so there's no connection um, to the rest of the IP. Sometimes there's data in them that then that shows like severe deficits for students that then aren't further addressed later in the IEP. Um, so the idea of present levels and per of performance are just to really get a good understanding of what is the student, what does the student know and is able to do so that we can then go from exactly where they started and build them a sufficient IEP to get them to where we want them to go. Um, in terms of transition needs, I want to be really clear. There's only two items for transition on here, and that was intentional. Um, we're not saying that it's not important, but it also gets reviewed in indicator 13. And so it was really important to us that nothing that was in here is also reviewed for um, indicator 13 because we don't want your district to get hit twice on the same thing. And so items 34 and 50 are not part of indicator 13 reviews. And so that's why they were selected um, to be part of this review because they aren't in indicator 13. Um, item 35 talks about the adverse effects. So what is that adverse effect on uh, educational performance and was it, you know, sufficiently addressed within the IEP? Um, then it goes into consideration of special factors. So were there behavior needs? I'll be honest, one of the biggest um, in special factors, probably one of the biggest errors we tend to see is that um, it will say you'll go on for present. Teachers will go on for days in the present levels about how the student was really struggling with behavior but then when you get to special factors and the annual goals it'll say nothing about how to address that behavior um, that was so problematic in the present level so we're really just looking for consistency so um, across your IEP does it tell a whole story um, from start to finish about how, where the student is what they know and able to do and how can we can how can we do them and that really applies to this whole thing so are you consistent within your IEP to say these are the things we really want to work on and here's the items that they're struggling with and here's how we address those items that they were struggling with um, so we'll be looking for those um, the next section is measurable annual goals um, it will not get into the weeds of a b c d e f um, but it will look at someone who doesn't know this child pick up the IP and um, monitor it in the same way. So if if two reviewers could pick up the same IP and say, I think I can monitor this. I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. Um, that would pass the muster test. Um, we will be talking about progress monitoring and you will to look at two sets of progress monitoring, which sounds a little weird, but if we know where their progress monitoring was, we can determine whether or not their present levels addressed the progress monitoring from the state it was in whenever the IEP was developed and then also their most recent progress monitoring. Um, progress monitoring is the only thing that we can't currently access in Infinite Campus. So we are going to ask that you upload their progress monitoring, the last two cycles of their progress monitoring into Infinite Campus if you have it available. Um, at the end of this, whenever I finish talking, Matt's going to show you exactly where to put it in Infinite Campus so that you know that. Um, 
And so you'll be able to do that once we give you those. Those are the only items we're asking you to upload everything else we already have access to in Infinite Campus, so you wouldn't have to upload anything else or get it together for us. So we're hopeful that that's really helpful for you. Um, and if it if it shows to be helpful, it may be something that we consider, you know, continuing in the future just to reduce the workload on the district as much as we're able. Um, item 39 is going to talk about specially designed instruction. So is it with the present levels? Does it tell a story? Do we put the right, you know, things in there? Um, and then we'll talk about supplementary aids and services. Is there any, you know, is it all in alignment with the rest of the IP? Um, 42 talks about accommodations for state assessments. 44 talks about program and modifications and support for schools personnel. Again, one of the things that's frequently um, missed on here is conference summaries that will talk about how um, teachers need to be trained on the PASS program or something like that. Um, and you'll see it in the conference summary, but not actually in the student's IEP that those things would be addressed for schools personnel. You, you know, so just make sure that those things are consistent. Um, then we go into least restrictive environment. So really talking about, you know, was there, could the services not be provided in that thing? Are there any harmful effects? Those types of things. Did the ARC have those conversations? Um, and then it'll go into special education and related services. So, you know, are your services aligned with the rest of your IP? So if you think about it, you know, we really think about it as that cyclical cycle. Does the progress monitoring inform the present levels? Do the present levels inform the rest of the IP? And then the, the progress on that IP across the year then inform the next IP. So it just really kind of makes a big circle in that it all comes back together and should, you should all really align. Um, after that, we'll talk about concerns of the parent. So did you consider the concerns of the parent within the IEP? Um, and then that that's typically found in like conference summaries. And should a parent not have anything to say, then that's OK. Um, you would be considered in compliance if the parent didn't have anything to say. It would be in compliance. Um, it's just if there was anything that you know wasn't considered or anything like that. Um, and then there is the multi-year course of study. Um, Please know that in that what we're looking for is to make sure that that multi year course of study is fully developed and that it doesn't just say um, electives. So we would expect you to fully develop it into exactly what those electives look like and what are they done. And additionally, just wanted to give you all a reminder if potential other violations come up within the um, review, then we would pursue those as well. We're required to do that under our general supervision requirements from the Office of Special Education Programs. Um, and so should we see a, additional pop, viol, possible violations, we will you know, go that direction if we need to. But I do wanna tell you like we're not going in anticipating additional violations. Um, we try to really go looking with blinders on, but sometimes um, there are things that we can't unsee because where we're looking to find the information we have to have forces us to see them um, when we're there. So we'll look as, you know, as blindering as we're able to, but if there was an additional possible violation that we became aware of, we would, you know, pursue it. Um, so those are the item numbers. And again, these are attached to your um, invitation today so that you are able to really kind of see um, those ahead of time, start talking to your teachers about them now and seeing if you can get kind of everything in, in order. Um, and then you'll know exactly what it is we're looking for when we get there. Um, so I'm going to take us back to the agenda that I apparently got rid of. Never mind. Um, and so I believe the next thing on the agenda is Matt going over um, exactly how to upload those things into Infinite Campus. Let me try to share my screen here. Please, someone let me know when this uh, is visible in Campus. You can see it. Great. Now, I believe as long as you have access to create a new special ed document for a student, you should have access to upload a document into that area. I've just got a, a fake student I put in here just to make sure we're not showing any any real uh, PII. So, of course, you'll go student information, special ed general, and the documents tab. I've made some fake documents out there just so you know what, it, what it's going to look like when we upload a document. There's an upload document button right here we'll click. And I... Uh, I'm just going to name it, you know, progress monitoring, just something, something to get it out there. And I've got a fake file already here. Uh, you select your file, you'll browse out and select the file you want to upload. You've got the option to staple it to a, to a form that's already out there or to associate it to a form in a year. I'm not doing any of that for this. I'm just going to go ahead and hit save. 
and we get a new uploaded forms area a folder there and it'll, it'll have the the document in there if i open this it's just a calendar it's nothing nothing real so i just wanted a, a example out there so like i said as long as you have access to create a new a new document out here you should be able to upload a form where you need to i guess that's all i've got for you thanks matt you're welcome um so you know at this point we'll open it up to questions and i know all your mics are muted so if you want to speak if you'll raise your hand we can unmute your mic um or if you would just like to put it in the chat as well that's okay too and we can get any kind of questions but that's all we had for this afternoon like i said we can stay back and answer any questions we just wanted to thank you for coming today um you can email you know me or alisa or april peeper with any kind of programmatic questions that you have in the meantime um, and if there's any way that we can help you to get ready, please let us know. Um, you know, we'll do whatever it is that that we can to to help facilitate that. So thanks for your time this morning. And if you have any questions, feel free to um, raise your hand or drop those in the chat and we'll stay behind and kind of let you do it. Um, general ideas on interview questions. Good question. They will be, Christina, they will be really related to the same items that were on your um, on the record review items but they would potentially be more systemic in nature um so like a good example would be um off the top of my head i think i'm struggling a little bit but just kind of thinking about how do you implement those district wide um how do you set up systems like what do your systems look like to ensure that ips are implemented are there any kind of systems that are breaking your your um, ability to to do special factors down or is there anything in place um, that systemically you know how do you think about specially designed instruction how do you determine the amount of time that a student gets for um, special education and related services um, yes they said just a clarification do not associate the progress monitoring to the IEP it's up to you Tina if you put it with the IEP we will find it there and if you don't then that's okay too so um, if you do it just like Matt did and you don't associate it we'll look for it in the other documents but we'll double check as associated with um, IEPs if your district likes it better there that's fine with us as well good question um if they were gonna matt if they were gonna connect the progress monitoring to a current iep what how would they go about doing that can you show that really quick that is a good question i'm not certain if that's going to be the associate or the staple let me uh let me get back into ic real quick amy do you know um staple i think connects it to the iep and associate puts it in a certain folder let me pull that student up again and we'll we'll try that out. You've been advised to associate. Yeah. There, well, there was a point in time where you always, didn't want to staple. We always said in the past that staple didn't work. I mean, wouldn't um, transfer from one district to another, but now it does. So you can do either now. I'm going to remove this one that I put out there and, and try to put it in there. You said staple, Amy? Yes. Okay. Staple will, will attach it to a, a document. So does it let us choose the doc? Yep, it sure does. Great. So we'll staple that to the IEP. Hit save. And yep, there we go. You'll see the plus mark beside the IEP. Click that and there's that document. So whichever works best for your district, I'm going to let that be, you know, a district decision where you put your progress monitoring. Um, I'm fine with it either way. Um, whatever works best for you guys and is best for your own organization is fine with us. Okay. I think that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to email us, but thank you for your time this morning. We hope you have a great rest of your morning. And like I said, if you have any questions, um, please reach out.